Hello and welcome to the first episode of Detecting the Unknown. My name is Wim and today I will show you a demonstration about active enforcement with the Vectra Detect platform. So before we start the demonstration, I want to quickly give you an idea of what we are going to do. The purpose of the Vectra platform is mainly to prevent hackers from exfiltrating data or implementing a ransomware. What an attacker will do is he will um, do an initial compromise through phishing or other ways he sees meaningful. And once that has been done and the user has executed the payload, he will have a command and control uh, session set up to his command and control server. After that has been established, the attacker will start doing local reconnaissance and may also escalate the system depending on the user rights he has initially on the machine. This will result in a vector load detection. Uh, vector load detection in this sense means that there is no need to panic currently because there is only a remote connection, so no harm has done. We need more information before we can decide that something is critical. Important to see here, and this is also the reason why we are talking about the unknown, is that we are looking at behavior of the uh, connections. We are seeing here a completely new address, EC2 instance address, and this is unknown in any Intel feed, will not be detected by IPS, and will thus not be stopped by the firewall. Second action that we are going to perform is AD recon. And the purpose here is to use LDAP queries. We want to understand who are the domain admin users and who or what is the group policy. This can take minutes, hours, days, depends on how fast the attacker wants to progress. In our case, this will only take a few minutes because we will do it quickly. And this will have the machine ending up in the critical quadrant. Now, because we are using active enforcement, we are able to automatically stop the attack with automated response. So we are not only detecting, but we are also stopping the attack. The setup that we are having in place in our lab environment is we have a Vectra system, obviously, and we have a virtual machine running a Vectra script that is publicly available and downloadable on the Vectra GitHub. And we have a Fortinet firewall in this case, but this firewall can be any other firewall that has an API where we communicate with. On the right side, we have a famous, um, I would say, uh, adversary and also red teaming uh, software called Cobalt Strike. And we will use this software to attack or perform an attack on the, in the demonstration. Okay, so let's jump into the environment. We have um, a, a command and control server that we log into remotely. Uh, what we will concurrently see here is that we have uh, performed some tasks. Uh, so we have dumped uh, passwords from um, with Mimikatz. We have also dumped uh, hashes, as you can see here. Now I'm going quickly over it because the functionality here in Cobalt Strike is actually really nice. You can find all the things that you have done already uh, related to uh, hash dumps and mimicats uh, uh, shown here uh, in a list. So you do not need to go through the individual um, command line results. Now, if we go to uh, the Vectra user interface, uh, we will basically, as we quickly look, we will actually see here that we have desktop seven. And if you remember here, the name of the machine that we have compromised is desktop seven. So if we look at desktop seven, we will see that there is a hidden tunnel currently detected. And this is also the tunnel that we are using. So this is the address of our command and control server. If we actually go into this host, we will see that um, a command and control de detection is actually shown and we will can or we can see actually the, the details about this detection and currently we see how much data approximately has been sent over this connection we see the ga3 ga3s and we see the full domain 
Now, what we obviously want to do is we want to make progress and attacker will not be happy with only just seeing this as a result. So what we will do is we will progress in our attack. What I want to do now, or uh, what the attacker would like to do is basically um, he wants to understand what are the admins in the environment or who are the admins. So what I need to do for that is I need to get system because currently I'm a local admin. So if I want to do an LDAP query here, like you will see, so let's do it quickly, uh, get the domain user and get admin account. What you will see is that this will fail because this um, local admin uh, does not have the rights uh, to uh, query uh, DAD. So we will get result, and the result will show that uh, it is unable to, uh, to perform this. So what we need to do now is we need to get system. So let's quickly get system. It's actually fairly easy. I go to targets, right click on my machine here that I have. I do jump, I use PSXEC. And what I will do is I will use, let me quickly do that again, jump. Oh, sorry for this one, PSXEC. I use my current token. I will use SMB and I will do it look. So what I will do now is actually I will set up a SMB connection to the, this machine locally through, through SMB, but now I'm system. So now I have the same rights as the um, machine has, that is domain join. So if I do the same task now, get domain users, admin account, and I press run, I will basically get the results that I am expecting. As you can see, it grays out for a second because it's performing some tasks. So here we see all the uh, admin accounts with their details uh, in them. So we see, for example, here Manson at wim.lab. Uh, we see the details about this user account. So we now have a good idea of who are the admins in the environment. What I also like, would like to know is what are the group policies in this environment? So that's the next thing I'm going to do is give me the domain group policies. Same thing, just click run and I will get the result populated soon. <coughs> So this is the information about the group policy container with all the details what we would like to know. Now, we have talked about active enforcement and this is what we are seeing here. So we have this virtual machine running a script in my lab. It is running every five seconds. Obviously in an enterprise environment, it would only run like maybe every five to 10 minutes in a cron job. But for the purpose of uh, the demo, uh, we want to speed it up a little bit. So every five seconds, this script will run and will check if there is a host that has a certainty or a threat uncertainty of 6060 or higher. So what happens then is when there is a machine with this score, it will ask the IP address of the Vectra and then pass it on to the firewall so that it can be blocked. So how does this look in um, Fortinet? because this is the firewall that we are using. As said before, could be any other firewall if it has an API. We have created a policy that says that uh, the traffic uh, that is basically coming from the LAN and going to the WAM, uh, we have created the group and that group will be used to add IP addresses. If this, if this or if there is an IP in this block list, the connection to the outside will be blocked. So it will no longer be able to connect to the outside. So let us quickly refresh and see if we already have a detection popped up. Still waiting for that. So let's hold down uh, for a, a second. So let's refresh again. And so here we have the uh, detection. Obviously, uh, we are working with a um, 
machine learning and AI system. So we do not have immediately the detection what is logic. So if I go to this suspicious LDAP query, what I will see is that um, we now have the detection of the policy container. We will have uh, the other one soon as well coming in of the uh, admin users. Now, what is important here is um, what happens to this machine because it's now in critical and because it's, because it's in critical, it will be blocked. So this is the IP address of the machine, 36, and now it can no longer access the internet. So this means that the attacker can no longer access the machine. So if we go here to the um, Cobalt Strike instance, we will see that our machines are grayed out and that this timer is no longer interactive and that our connection is basically broken. So for the attacker, uh, this his attack has now been blocked and he can no longer progress. So he can no longer download or exfiltrate information. He can no longer implement his ransomware. So to conclude, we have automatically blocked this machine. So true, because it's in critical, it has 6481. We can read out that it has been blocked. So we have feedback that it has been succeeded. If we now want to unblock, if we would say the threat is actually cleaned out, the machine is reinstalled or whatever, we can just simply do unblock underscore firewall. We do this and then we basically go back to 40 uh, net and then we basically see that after a few seconds, this uh, block or Cognito block sources has been emptied again and the machine can now again connect. Obviously, this is not what we want to have uh, happening uh, now, but um, for the purpose of the demo, I wanted to show you how easy it also was to unblock uh, the machine.